Mr. Page, are you available? I'm here. Okay. Yes, we are ready. Okay, we're on the record. We're in case D16 537499D, Norcut versus Council. All right, thank you. Um, Council, your appearance and your phone number? Good morning, Mr. Hayden. I'm number six for the answer. We have a plaintiff Golden Norcut. Please present your video as well. Be noted, and let's have mom and dad raise your right hands, and my clerk is going to swear both of you in. You and each of you do solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. <coughs> Ma'am, you're muted. <coughs> Thank you. Judge, we can't hear you. We can't hear gold. I didn't hear, I didn't hear man's response. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. She's muted. We didn't hear her response. Okay. Mom, do you swear to tell the truth? Yes. Thank you. There we go. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, any procedural matters before we argue this? Motion to for temporary order. Otherwise, I'll explain the time frames for argument. Uh, this is how we'll handle it. It's 45, uh, did I say 45 minutes uninterrupted? And, uh, whatever, five, ten minutes for rebuttal. And then it's Dad's motion, so he gets the, uh, the, Mr. Page will oppose, and then Dad will go last with his rebuttal, unless there's any other counter motion, but uh, mainly on the substantive issues. Uh, does anybody remember what the time frame is? Because I will keep track of time. Mm. If he goes for 45 and I go for uh, whatever I go for, and then he does a rebuttal and give a decision, uh, right. we should be done before 11. Yeah. So I think for that 45, it's either you would reserve 30 minutes and 15 for a rebuttal, or 35 and 10. Uh, I would need to know from you, Mr. Council, how much of that 45 you want to save for rebuttal after Mr. Page goes. And then Mr. Page will have, if he needs to use all of it, the entire 45 minutes. Uh, I thought um, that the 45 was going to be the the beginning amount in the rebuttal would be the same, uh, or, or 15 or 20. I thought yesterday, I'm not clear on that. So, so I, I can, I can give you, I can give you 45 and then I can give you 10. I think that's very reasonable okay. and fair. So, 45 okay. and 10, that would bring Mr. Page up to 55. Uh, and, um, you go last, Dad, and then I will, uh, uh, get to my part, whether I either issue a decision, likely I may want to um, look over everything I've read to date and maybe issue an under advisement, some type of a written court minute order decision, um, and if there are any exhibits, should I ask if there are any exhibits for this motion or if they're already filed in as, a, as part of your motion? Yes, ma'am. I uh, filed them, and then I recently filed just two supplemental in the past couple of days. Okay, so um, you can use the share screen function, and uh, anything you want the court to see is just the motion here. Uh, I would like to say that this is just a motion, kind of a band-aid order again, a temporary order. The ultimate decision on this temp motion for temporary order should not set the tone for the you know, which way the trial is going to go, because you're going to be with the new judge in the early part of next year to uh, finish up your trial in person. Okay? Uh, any other questions from Dad or Mr. Page? And we'll be on a strict time limit. I usually give you a five-minute warning, a one-minute warning, and then if you're still talking, we'll have to cut you off, because we are on a strict schedule here. Okay? Thank you for your, thank you for your time, Your Honor.
All right. Uh, I am ready, and I will be taking notes. And I'll have Helen, the court clerk, type in the chat box there his start time, and then uh, Helen, help me keep track of time. Type in the chat box when he has uh, five minutes left, one minute left, and then when he ends. Okay. And he'll have 45 and 10 for a rebuttal. And Mr. Page can have a full 55 if he needs to use the whole 55 minutes um, uninterrupted. Both sides will be uninterrupted, okay? If you have any objections, um, you can save it for the end, uh, and uh, we can note that for the record. All right, Helen, did you acknowledge that? Yes, Your Honor. You'll type in the chat box. Okay, so each of them get a five-minute warning, a one-minute warning, and then you can just write STOP in capital letters, and... Okay. We'll know when he's done. So I won't interrupt as well. You'll see it in the chat box um, when your time limits are, are approaching. Okay, so Dad, I'm ready to hear from you on your motion, look at your exhibits, and we will um, we'll begin. And I'll mute myself. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to try to share my screen. Not yet. Not yet. May take a few seconds. There we go. Okay, do you see the screen? Yes. The 
first thing you're going to see on uh, DES 00004 is a letter of endorsement from a gentleman, David Pellet. David Pellet is highly involved in youth sports in the state of Nevada and across the country. Once again, I've had numerous of witnesses testify on my behalf of my character, my demeanor, my ability to parent, and my role as a father, not only as a father, but in the community, and uh, there's been no other findings except for positive. How positive and influential for the community and my own son. Again, I asked the court, why are we here? It's supposed to be in my child's best interest, right? So in your child's best interest, why would you sabotage and destroy the child's future? If the other party truly had my son's best interest in mind, she would have never cut off any communications. She would have never went MIA. She would fully support his education. Your Honor, he has been in Seattle for two years. He is failing every single class. People say, oh, they're better than improved. Well, Your Honor, they're not. And uh, if I filed all these exhibits in his education. And we can go to that here in a moment, and, and I'll point out other factors in his grades. The fact that when he was in the fourth grade, he had all C's, B's, and A's. The fifth grade is when the turmoil and, and the chaos started in his life. That's when his grades started to go down, and his behavior, and everything else. As you see, uh, we talked about football, we talked about uh, his higher education, we talked about his future. My son's future is the most important thing to me in a by far period. He, he, his athletic, uh, athletic abilities have the potential to pave for a financially free freedom and the ability to attend a D1 college. His foundation is already set. All that Gage has to do is do his part. Meaning he has to do his grades and he has to have his behavior check. And then also, he has to make sure that he's consistent. Then he has to have support. Let me ask you this. If you have a daughter that's gifted in dance or piano, uh, this is not your first day at the barbecue, Your Honor. You've been doing this 20 plus years. You've seen this multiple, multiple times. You know, if a child is gifted in an ability, the parents and the positive family members that are in that child's life foster that talent and do everything that you can to increase that talent and make sure that child has a better opportunity and can succeed and grow with that talent. Such as if you have a daughter that's in piano, you put her in plays, you put her in drama, you put her in uh, school activities, you put her in lessons, you put her in competitions. You don't turn around and put her in something that's completely opposite or is an idea of that talent. Your Honor, I've stated for, for many, many times, the foundation of my son has been molded and set forth. He is expected and slotted to go to Bishop Brown High School. Now, that's not a scholarship, but it's also the matter of fact of he is slotted to go there at that point in time when he's at that age and he tests in, he's got to do his part. But they were there, and they always want to be there. The community supported it. The, the foundation has been set there. And again, uh, as you see in this exhibit, DEF 00005 of Exhibit 9, again, the other party is sending harassing emails to the school with this extreme animation, not only to alienating me as a father, but also putting the school involved and destroying any opportunity there trying to alienate, drag them into a dirty custody fight where they are completely not, you don't do that. Why would you do that? Right? And then all of a sudden you have a mother that all of a sudden is, oh well, I'm pulling against private schools, I'm pulling against private schools, but all of a sudden now she's emailing, oh, I'm going to look at sending her into a private school in Seattle. The, the entire time, she has done nothing but the opposite of what I've suggested, just because I have a voice. Because I've said something, or if I suggest something in his education, the mother completely 
only the five who's best interest just because I've made a statement or I have input in his future. And now this is causing an invisible, intangible emotional abuse that's life damaging. This is detrimental to give his education as well as his future abilities that's forever going to change his life. This is life changing. Meaning that, you know, she had two years, Your Honor, two years in Seattle, and there is no reason why we feel that should be getting any better. The only reason why it may be getting any better or there's attention to it is because that's becoming to light. That's right. Also in this exhibit, you'll see further down of the numerous and numerous of emails to Ms. Cooley trying to influence the other party and sway her of any decisions being made. This is just a big screen is blank. The screen is blank. You've been served by the exhibits? Sir, you're presenting this in a hearing. You need to at least, if you're going to use the screen to refer to them, at least have them be visible. Um, can you not see my screen? No, no, you can't. Yeah. Yeah. Judge, you're muted. Yeah, I, I, it's a blue screen. Um, Let me try it this way. Can you see the blue screen now? Um, no. You had it up before. The last thing I saw was the um, Go GoFundMe account, and you started talking about an endorsement letter from a date. Yeah, That's where we. Yeah, the only thing you saw was the GoFundMe account. How about now? Can you see my screen now? Well, it's gray. You see exhibit nine? Uh, no, it's gray. Sometimes there's a little bit of a delay. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Okay. I'm not gonna fault you for. Check. How about, how about now? I it, it, it's it's gray. It's like a blue background with a gray box. Oh my God! I'm sorry. Yeah, I should have tested this before he brought it into court. Well, he was working and he had his growth on me. Oh. How about now? Mm, unfortunately, no. Okay, that might be a good idea. Okay. Maybe that one is just not appearing on as a PDF. Do I? No, unfortunately, no. Do you have the exhibit that I found you on? We do. Um, if it's filed, let me get, get into Odyssey and then I could follow along. Do I follow a prompt so I don't understand why? Yeah. Maybe it's just uh, doesn't like the Acrobat reader. But it's supposed to just mirror what you have on your screen. Unless maybe you have a firewall. Gray. If they are in order of your argument, I can. Is it the uh, Okay. Yeah, I, I have. Okay. So, is it nine? Is is what I was referring to? Uh, David, hello, hello. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, David, hello. Um. Okay. Okay. Again, um, your endorsements of my go ahead. David David Perry is is uh, highly involved in uh, 
youth sports, not only in the state of Nevada, but across the country. Um, his son and my son have been neck and neck, and, and they played together for years. Um, and we've been, you know, on the ESPN, uh, all kinds of academics. Um, and again, it's just another character with us, you know. Um, and then, um, if you scroll down past that, DEF 00005, now, this is what I'm talking about, you are. What kind, what kind of parents, what kind of brother or father would do this or send such a harassing email to a, a high school that is one of the most prestigious high schools in the country that people need across this country to go there? You have parents that work five jobs just to send their child there. They really wanted my son to attend high school. And everybody knows this school you want. You're talking about a future. Even if football's not his future, anybody that goes to this school, 99.9% of the children that go to that school get a full ride to the college of their choice. This would be life-changing in setting up a solid future to my child. My other son was a city bishop Gorman for art. He also had an internship at Pixar Films. And he elected his mother to put him out of the school and sent him over to LBA. And again, you know, his major was art. And it's kind of funny that all of a sudden my, you know, my younger son all of a sudden was interested in art. However, my point in this exhibit is to show the intangible, the, the, the damage that is being done with no other intent to harm me and my child's ability to ever attend the school. She's already done it with faith Lutheran. She sabotages her ability to be slotted, and, and, and anyone's best interest uh, would never do this. She's already destroyed the faith Lutheran opportunity, and uh, you can't get this back, Your Honor. Continuing down to show um, that all of a sudden she's always been against private school, but now the other party just mysteriously all of a sudden wants to go to a, a private school? It, it makes no sense. No sense at all, Your Honor. So going back to um, exhibits that I submitted, one, two, and three is education. Everybody saying his grades are doing better. He's doing better. He's doing better. But he gave me honor. Uh, he has been there for two years. He's not getting better. Every time I try to have a conversation with the other party or engage in my son's education or offer any input, as you see, I want you to look at exhibit one. Are you, able to, are you able to share that one? Let me try it again. Okay. Can you see it? Um, it's a blue screen. It shows up as a gray block. Uh, yeah. Exhibits one through, yeah. Hmm? Uh, that, yes. Yes. Yeah. So I think you had to open the Acrobat Reader window. Okay, so we can follow along here. Are you going to show the grades? Okay, yes, Your Honor. So, if exhibit one, every single time I try to engage with the other party, have any kind of conversation, this is what I get. The response, quote unquote, 
go fuck yourself in the bed that you stole. Now, the other party claims that all of my account was hacked. This wasn't sent for me. All of these just, just ridiculous statements that are far from truth. Because she continues to send these messages, not only in her, but with her talking parents as well. But if you scroll down, look at Gage's sixth grade enrollment. Again, this is his card. I am never to be listed. I am mean, completely alienated as even being acknowledged as a father or an emergency contact. I've been replaced by a cousin, a brother, and an aunt. Clearly, all lost their records. If you can scroll down, you can see all of this tardiness. Even if he's tardy from class, even if it's like, oh, well, I make the class because I was forcing around. To the tune of 70 times, Your Honor, 70 times he has been late, tardy, or had an abundant amount of absences. There is no excuse. No excuse whatsoever. It's a pure lack of disregard of his best interest and his education. No other, no other excuse. All of the absences. How did you count 70? Um, and I'll show you if you scroll down. I'll show you when I get down to um, the end of the year report. So if, in March of 2019, this is sixth grade. Can you see my calendar that I have up there? Yes. Okay, you're talking like 20, one, two, three times a week. It's 20. It's in the classes, Your Honor. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's their it it parental responsibility to watch your children, and the parents will get this information, and no correction, and no discipline, and absolutely no disregard for it being on time. This world's his foundation. Being on time rules your future. Not caring. Obviously, there's no care, even if it's late to class. There's multiple, multiple, and the behavior continues. There's no excuse. None whatsoever. Keep scrolling down. This is the attendance detail report on DES014. It shows two or two days, right, in school. So if you scroll down to the very bottom, it shows you To this date, to, to June, 12 days were excused, 4 days were unexcused, 3 and 21 7 days, 70 times tardy, 70. 70 times tardy. This is starting out in the 6th grade and supposedly a fresh start. Supposedly, and, and, and the other party cares about his education, 70 times. Keep scrolling down, you'll go as it continues, there's a tennis further detail report, this is still the sixth grade, Your Honor. The next quarter, he's still 21 times tardy now. His grades, sixth grade, R, A, C, E, F, F, C plus, for one, that's your bad. Semester one is a D plus, F, A, S, F, and a D. Behavior report. The behavior report already out of the gate at sixth grade. He has numerous amounts of issues. Now, when the court, and I ask the court again once more, that you, you clearly stated that the relocation was a mistake, that you, you acknowledged that uh, it, it may have been the wrong decision, right? Uh, his behavior continues. Was he, did he have behavior issues here in Las Vegas? Well, yeah, he, he had a little bit. It was because of the divorce and the proceedings that were taking place and uh, other uh, behaviors from his mother and his father during that time. So yes, he, there is a little bit here, but not to the magnitude of the detail and the issues that were going on because allegedly this was a clean slate that I was doing well, I, I was not involved, right? The mother had full responsibility. Continues inappropriate behavior, 313, 213. All 
of these issues, may I add, I, she never brought them to my attention. Never. I asked her, how's he doing in school? Is he doing great? How's he doing? He's doing better than ever. That's all that the court has ever heard from the other side. Well, in fact, it's a mirage of the real truth that he's not. He's acting out. Why is he acting out, Your Honor? My son is acting out, A, because he has been ripped from his environment. He has been ripped away from everything that he has known. His friends, family, football, 10 months out of the year, for six years straight, to absolutely dead halt. Nothing. And that's being the best interest of your child? It is not. Also, as you continue on, emails from a science teacher acknowledging that his behavior is an issue. But right here, Your Honor, DEF-024, this is what I want you to focus your attention on. Okay, so the other party says he's late to class. Big deal, he's late to class. Well, I'm sorry, but if you're late to an interview, you don't get the job. If you're late to uh, the, the court appearing, you make a decision, and, and I get the consequences, like I did last year, Your Honor. I forgot the date, and I, I was late. It was my fault. Well, you're setting a foundation that's going to forge my son's life. And as the other party sits there and rolls her eyes, look at, Gage had 29 missing assignments. This is 29, Your Honor. This is semester one. 29 missing assignments. And that's okay? That did he do better than ever? His education is completely F, 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 F. Don't do any of the work. In sixth grade, I asked the school if he should be held back. Your Honor, the court needs to know and acknowledge this is not in my son's best interest. His reading level, he's not even reading at level one. Your Honor, please, I, I'm asking the court, there is no excuse for this behavior. There is no excuse for the other party ignoring this information. No excuse. No excuse for going to his mathematics. His mathematics in sixth grade. He's barely at level one. He should be at level four. He is not. And you know, Your Honor, the whole thing is twisted and sick and turned against me. Personal, it's a personal vendetta against me. The other party is clearly allowing my son to fail, so he has no attempt of ever making it into Bishop Bowman High School academically or any other school that I think that we should go to. It's a clear sabotage in my child's education. There's no excuse for this. You know, zilch. And if you continue to scroll down, exhibit two, seventh grade. So it gets no easier. There's a BOB report. Why are you He's got fighting. He's fighting. He's out of his attention. He's cursing. Gage, I mean, that's the end of it. Gage is cussing. He came home from summer, and they're going to read the way with shit. Fuck like, damn. And I'm like, stop cussing. Stop cussing. He's allowed to, to misbehave. He has no discipline and no direction. Of course he would want to go there. It's a teenager's dream. I can say sit there and play Xbox all day, PlayStation all day. His behavior reports are simply unacceptable, Your Honor. Unacceptable. And the other party's response when I bring it to our attention is Gage is doing better than ever. My son is acting out because the other party has removed him and prevented him from talking to his father from fostering the relationship, from playing football, my son is trying to make both parties happy with moving into uh, a, a personality or trying to tell the other party what they want to hear just because of the situation. He's torn between two homes and two parents. But yet, you know, he gets no, there's no foundation for education. This is seventh grade, Your Honor. And it continues on, and it continues on. He's got more inappropriate behavior. 1022, 1010, 10, 10, 10, 9. And, and the other party never brought any of this to my attention. We're supposed to be co parenting. We're supposed to be, you know, having conversations about what's the best interest of our child. Not tit for tat. Every message that is sent to me 
is, is fraudulent statements of harassment. The, it, 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 all I've ever heard in this court is heard negative is fraudulent accusations. There has not been any conviction whatsoever of any domestic violence or anything whatsoever. It's fraudulent claims. It's only been argued and properly dismissed by the court of no findings. So why are we even talking about that? Why? Because that's all they have. That's all they have against me. Child support. Okay, well, you know what? I'm sorry. I don't have it. I didn't have the child support money to give the other party. But due to his deplorable conduct, um, hiding my child going off the radar, forced me to go spend $5,000 with Jason Manning in January to get the ball started to find my child, and then all the other money that I had to give the attorney just because of her conduct, not mine, her conduct, Your Honor, her violations of the orders that you put in place. She's mocking your orders, Your Honor. Why do you even have court orders if you're not going to enforce them? This is not your first day at the barbecue. It might be your last time at the barbecue, but it's not your first day at the barbecue, Your Honor. With all due respect, I know you've been down this road multiple, multiple times. And you can, it's clear, clear, it's very clear. Without any, uh, everything is, is right in front of you. His grades are failing. But it's the seventh grade in April. DS006. Party, absent, absent, party, absent, absent. No school. No school. And then he comes back. Absent, 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 party. How could you run out of school break or go right back? And you still can't work at the school in time? And you still can't get in the class in time? And 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 all the parties from sixth grade, as a parent, you haven't addressed this with your child and you continue to allow him to be tardy or no consequences? It's okay to be tardy. It's okay not to go to school. This is what you're doing. This is an all result of his failing grades is the lack of care. And he continues to go down to seventh grade. It repeats itself. Semester one. D F zero zero nine. You got F B F C A F. He's doing better than ever. Look at the class he has at A on your honor. Physical education. You're a coach. You know athletic ability when you see it. Again, if you have a child that's gifted and talented, and it's not just because I'm living vicariously through my child, or if I'm a meathead father, or I say you're going to do this, I say, no. Multiple, multiple people have sit in court with me, Your Honor, and have testified on behalf of his abilities and my character. And the only class that he's excelling is, is for his education, of course. That's a no-brainer. He's going to. Scrolling down, again, so his absence from required performance has affected his grade, often fails to do his work. This is what affects his ability. Science, often involved in arguments with others, needs to use class more effectively. F, again in science, disruptive in class. Grade is a reflection of students' effort, conduct is improvement. This is seventh grade, Your Honor. In physical education, he needs discipline. He needs improvement. Lack of initiative. And he's doing better than ever. He's tardy 19 times so far in seventh grade. So far, and this is like semester of one. 19 times tardy. That is not a better life. That is not. Uh, uh, bettering your education. Scrolling down to more detailed reports on his grade. F. This is just a duplicate. Communication with his art class. So as you see, um, my response is on Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. DEF 03. I say, Nicole, thank you for sending this update. Has Gage been participating since we have been out on quarantine? I 
and need to better understand how the efforts or progress has been as he advanced in the work and the classes, as you know, I'm in Las Vegas with women and no support from the other side, so things are challenging, so I'm pushing as much as I can given the limitations. The teacher response. He has not been participating in art class since school closed. Now they're open, right? Well, he should be, but he's not. It's, a, it's important to get on track this week since his work will not be graded. We will not do a grade for his previous work due to the closure, but now that we know that schools are out for a year, that is changing. Right? Scrolling down even further to another teacher. To Lewis, Social Studies. At least for this week, he hasn't completed Chapter 2, Part 1 quiz yet. But that doesn't mean he hasn't been taking notes, though. He hasn't until tomorrow to complete the quiz. I can let you know if he's attempted the quiz or not. He never completed the quiz. Never did any other work. More detailed information on his grades. F, 34%. 34%. Missing work, missing work, missing work, missing work, missing work. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but it's... it's my son is here, this would not be happening. Guarantee it. It's statistical, Your Honor. If there is not a father figure in the home, this is the, uh, one of the occurrences. This is what happens. Continues down, grade seven. Missing assignment, missing assignment, missing, 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 missing. As you see, and, and, and again, my right here, his math work. So I reach out to his math teacher. Can you let me know how engaging work has been? If you have any responses, uh, has been participating in all my sessions. Of the 21 assignments and five quizzes since April 20th, Gage has turned in six assignments and one quiz. The quiz he scored is zero. Three assignments he scored is zero. Two assignments he scored is one. But he's doing better than ever, Your Honor. He's doing better than ever. Right? So this is another email from his school math and algebra teacher, April 20th. I reached out to her and asked him how he's doing. Unfortunately, I haven't heard anything from Gage. Right? Again, another teacher confirms that for three weeks, he hasn't done any work at all. Nor has he even logged into school. Nor has he even done any work. But he's doing better than ever. Another teacher right here, May 5th. May 5th. Gage is not completing any work due to the closure. We have started doing the work for the He normally didn't have a prayer, but all the work can be typed into directly. He clicked and turned in all of his work, but none of it was completed. So again, he has no direction. He has no direction, no help, and he's not doing the work. So again, he's escaping into video games. He's depressed, he's sad, he's acting out. Again, this is all of his grades. So again, going into seventh grade, right? I want to do again, you need to see this. I'm sorry, this is going into eighth grade. Eighth grade of DEF038. Again, I, his father, is not even on the emergency contacts. I'm not even listed. In fact, I've been erased, Your Honor. I don't even exist. This is the eighth grade. Why is my name not on here? Why? Again, because it's about money. It's not about my child's best interests. Exhibit three, spring break. Your Honor, my son was supposed to be on a flight in Las Vegas for spring break, regardless of anything whatsoever. I'd like for you to read, listen to these emails that I wrote. Okay? I'll start at the very bottom, Your Honor. His Mr. Page also is in contempt of court as he perjured himself as I told him to Mr. Page that I would, I would fly to Seattle, pick up my son by myself, I would fly there, drive there, you tell me how to get in contact with my son because it's my time. And it's essential that I see him doing this time anyway, not only to see him, but to comfort him, 
to let him know that, his, that he's okay. His father's protecting him, right? So again, I reached out to the other party multiple times about spring break. Mr. Page, as of today, there is not a travel ban placed by the United States, and it is not your place nor your client's place to change or not modify the court's orders as is. The court's orders are very clear. It engages the travel home for spring break all of before 4 6. And since he is not in class, he may travel early. I will file for a charge and then engage that return home for spring break and file a notice of return and kidnapping charges because, in my eyes, it is kidnapping. Do your clients direct willful violation that there is not a travel ban in place within the United States? I've also asked your client how concerned she is with the situation in Washington. And you will find that her response is that she is not concerned with the situation, that it is not a Seattle issue, uh, in my opinion. And I've got that email to show you as well. And in my opinion, the, in, in my best day, it gives you the to leave Seattle, considering it's the highest potential area affected. So again, in this email, I clearly... If he, Mr. Page cannot even address me properly. He calls me Mr. Norcat. Mr. Norcat. I'm not Mr. Norcat, Your Honor. Nor is Mr. Page a doctor, a medical examiner. Nor is he a profession in any other uh, thing going on with the, with the COVID situation. Right? I ask him clearly that... Um, I've not shown any ill will. I've not harassed anything. All I'm asking you to do is follow the court orders. That's it. I want to see my child. And, and the legislature deems that parental visitation is essential. The, the United States president did not shut down travel. So, essential travel was permitted. I've asked Mr. Page clearly that I would fly to Seattle and pick up my child. Hey, you got about five minutes. Uh, so what happened with spring break? Did you get it? Uh, no, I did not get spring break. And I, 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 I got, I, in fact, I had to call the police. Here's a police report to even locate him because Gage was not even at their apartment. Let me also explain in an apartment, right? He was not there. All communication was cut off. I didn't have phone records. But I called the police to locate him. And after multiple attempts, finally they get a hold of the other party and she's screaming at her sisters. It's part of the court order and also in the orders, Your Honor, that you're, I have to be notified of where my child is at. All she had to do was say, hey, during COVID, during quarantine, we're going to my sisters. No big deal. But not only did she cut off contact, I had to worry about where my child was at during this time. Okay? Also, I need you to uh, uh, understand the fact that um, uh, I wanted to also share some images with you over the summer. Right? I need to address that. And hopefully that you can see these. Can you see my screen? Um, I saw the thumbnails, so maybe I have to click the window where that photo is right here. Can you see? No, it's blue. I saw okay. your thumbnails. I think you have to open the. Okay, how about now? I see the thumbnails. You see them now? No, gray. Really. I think you have to, right before you have to go down and open that window, go to the actual window where that photos are opened. Okay. How about now? Uh, no. Just saw the thumbnails and it comes up as a gray box. Now? Um, mm, no. It's gray. Let me see the thumbnails again. I think I've seen those photos. Did you file them? No, they, they wouldn't file. Can you see the thumbnails now? Yeah, I can see the thumbnails. Okay. So, okay. um, so again, uh, a couple of things, very yeah. technical. Okay, do the technical difficulties. Listen, Your Honor, you can clearly see my son loves the family life here. He misses 
misses football. He misses the family. He misses the girls. He's been taught to hate the girls. He's been taught not to consider them as family. Also, what was so important, Your Honor, so important that she get him out of here and go back to her oldest son's wedding. Your Honor, he didn't go. She lied to you again. She both face lied to you and said last hearing that she bought the tickets. Travel was ready to go. Good to go. When I talked to Gage, he was getting to go. He stayed at home with Gavin while she went and came back the next day. So again, Your Honor, she has lied to you directly. She has used this court as a direct mockery on the system. She has gradually made false claims on things that have not taken place. She's emotionally abused my children to where they think that their father is a horrible, horrible person, which in fact that I'm not. The only witness that was testified on her behalf never has been involved in my son's life. Ever. Ever. Also, under the divorce degree in 2016, you ordered that she pay $6,000. I asked you to reduce that to judgment. She has yet to pay you a dollar. But it's all about money. It's all about child support. All you're going to hear from the other party is child support. Money. Money, 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 money. That's it. Okay, well, you know what? I'm sorry. I don't have the money because I had to use it. Isn't this time up? I'll allow him to finish his last sentence. You could finish your last point. Well, this is a poor Ellis vs. Carucci case. My son is not doing any better at all. He's saying this is a life changing decision that, that will forever impact his opportunities in life. She's had two years, Your Honor. Two years. Two years. Okay. We're going to go into plaintiff's um, position here. And uh, that's going to be set for a full 55 minutes. Can we take a, a quick three minute restroom break? And then I'll get into Mr. Page's uh, opposition. Okay, okay. I'm going three minutes. Um, 10 o'clock on the dot, please. It's 9.56 on my computer. Okay, Joe. I'll be back. We're Thank on you. the record.